there are 48 animals that we had to put down. Those animals included one wolf, six black bears, two grizzly bears, nine male lions, eight lionesses, one baboon, three mountain lions, and 18 tigers. I remember it all happening on a Wednesday evening at about 10 till 7 uh, is when I received the first phone call. We became international news by the next morning. It was just a disaster waiting to happen. Zanesville is a sleepy town in Muskingum County, Ohio, with a population of just over 25,000 people. Until 2011, Zanesville was best known for its Y Bridge and many beautiful parks. It's one of the last places in the world you would expect to find an exotic pet owner with so many animals. But on one fateful day, the worst example of exotic pet ownership brought Zanesville to the attention of the world. Zanesville is a very small, agricultural, very family-oriented community. Everybody knows everybody, and everybody knows what everybody's doing. It's a small town. One of these small town residents was lifelong inhabitant Terry Thompson, a decorated Vietnam War veteran whose main role had been as a machine gunner on a Huey helicopter. His wife, Marion, was an avid horse rider and a local school teacher. Many locals knew the Thompsons kept exotic animals, but Terry was better known as the man who flew a light plane under the Y Bridge. A notorious hoarder whose property was scattered with old cars and a dangerous mix of guns and wild exotic animals. Terry had drawn attention to himself many times over the years with his unusual behavior. Local police sergeant Todd Canaval has vivid recollections of Terry Thompson. We had dealt with him off and on. He had just been released from prison just a few days before this incident on a firearms charge. We had dealt with him in the past also about uh, the animals, just checking on their welfare and the safety of the public as far as the containment systems that uh, he provided them and such. He had several animals then, 70 some I believe. He had tigers, he had lions, he had black bears, he had grizzly bears, he had different apes. One time he had camels, numerous horses, uh, there was just animals everywhere. In the garage, there was a couple of tiger cages. There was a bedroom where a, a mountain lion, I think, lived. Um, there was monkeys in the basement in a cage. Yeah, Terry was different. Terry always kind of pushed the envelope, but Terry was Terry. I, he was never really disrespectful to me or anything. I was always concerned that either Terry or Marion would be attacked by the animals. I realized they had a good rapport with the animals, but they're still wild animals and something would trigger him. I figured maybe someday we would go up there and find one of them severely injured or killed. The sergeant's fear was realized on the evening of October 18, 2011. Terry's notoriety was about to extend beyond the small community of Zanesville. As the day drew to a close, it is believed that he cut open the cages of more than 50 of his wild animals, setting them free before taking his own life. Senator Troy Balderson was born and bred in Zanesville and had been a member of the Ohio House of Representatives since 2009. This incident was a trigger for him to amend the legislation surrounding exotic pet ownership in Ohio. About a mile down the road that evening, there was a, a tournament soccer game going on. There could have been a lot of tragedy, and, and there wasn't. For the most part, no one was injured. That was one of the biggest accomplishments that I feel that we that came out of the situation. The next thing I saw was a black figure. It turned out it was a bear. Sam Kopchak is a retired school teacher and lived next door to Terry. That evening, he was out in his own yard attending his own horse, Red, when he saw Terry's horses acting strangely. I saw the horses that were over there. It's probably about 60 horses, I estimate, that they had. They were going around a circle. And I said, well, they're not supposed to do that. Something's going on, you know. 
Then Sam saw something even more out of the ordinary. I actually got red up there by the corner. We walked down through here, and I just felt like something was looking at me, and I kind of turned to the left, and big male African lion, he came down. This is about the spot he was uh, sitting. He just sat down right there, and just kind of, you know, like that. And uh, I just kept on going, and I never looked back till I got down to the white fence of my barn. And then after I was down by my barn, he was pacing back and forth on the fence. As you can see, this is like a seven-strand, not a bob wire, just a smooth wire. And if he wanted to leap over that, he was big enough that he could have leaped over that fence. What Sam soon realized was that the lion was just the beginning of what was about to unfold. So I actually saw like six animals. The original bear and then the uh, lion, the male lion and the, and the female lion, and the, another bear and uh, the wolf went by and the tigers. Sheriff's office? Yeah, I think I just seen one. It looked like a jaguar or a wolf or something. I received a call that uh, some of the animals were out. We weren't sure to the extent of, of the situation, but I was requested to come to the scene. When we arrived, uh, we were advised by one of the patrol sergeants that he had been up in the, the compound area uh, looking for Terry or Marion and had uh, seen a body laying out in a field. And that was our first priority, determine who it was and if they were injured or deceased. We were first approached by, uh, I believe it was two tigers come out of a barn towards us. And as they rushed the truck, we were forced to dispatch them. Then we arrived in the area of where the body was, and it was quite apparent whoever it was was deceased. There was a white uh, tiger chewing on him. About that time, we were advised that there was two cats ready to exit the compound area on the south side of the property. So we had to go over there and dispatch those animals. I didn't know how many were out, but once we got up there, I had made contact with the sheriff that appeared that everything had been turned loose. And I mean, there was bears, there was tigers, there's lions running everywhere. It was a huge concern because it was later in the evening, you know, if it got dark, the only thing securing that property is just a regular barbed wire fence like you would have for cattle or whatever. You know, these animals would have easily cleared that and in a short time they'd have been in populated areas and injuring you know humans there was some that had escaped the perimeter but we had set up officers along the perimeter to contain that I discussed with the sheriff what our situation was there was no other option except to dispatch the animals we started engaging the animals at different distances some were shot 30 to 50 70 yards away but then it came to where we had to go to the barn areas and that because they were in there. And yeah, we had one lioness come at us. Uh, we ended up having to shoot her and she was stopped probably three feet from us when she finally went down. Most of us had AR-15 shooting the 223 round. I was concerned that maybe there wasn't enough power, but after we engaged a few animals and saw that, you know, the, the rifle, was doing its job, then I felt a little better that, you know, we, we could be safe. It was a coordinated effort to try to keep everything safe and, and contained. Sam became an unwitting bystander to a grisly scene. I saw the deputies pull in, and my first thing was, well, there's going to take more than two deputies to take care of this, because if, if all those animals are out. And uh, I saw a truck, and there was several, probably four, deputies on the back with, with the guns, and uh, they drove back there. And within a few minutes, I could hear shooting. It just sounded like a big fireworks display. It just kept on. It seemed like it went on forever. I saw them going across the field, just like hunters, you know, with a gap between them with their guns. 49 animals that they killed, and one missing, and six that were in the house. So it was 56 total animals that were there. It was quickly determined that it would have been impossible to control all these wild animals using tranquilizers. And the decision to use live ammunition undoubtedly saved human lives. To the best of my knowledge, there was one tiger left and the veterinarian there, I think her name was Wolf, she went over and got a perfect shot with a tranquilizer hitting perfectly where she wanted to. 
I mean, she, I guess, made the determination how much to give him, you know, how big he was. And he was in the weeds and so forth, and he come immediately charging out of there, and if the deputies weren't there, he'd have probably got her. They had to shoot it. When it comes down to a situation like that, I realize there, uh, you know, the animals have rights, but humans have more. And you just, you, you couldn't justify uh, risking human life for, for the animals. They had to be somewhat scared. They were out of their containment systems, uh, running loose. You just didn't know how they were gonna react. You could kind of surmise that he had let them go, but it wasn't until, you know, the investigation was completed later that we were pretty much, we, we knew that's what had happened. You know, even if you'd found him in some other containment systems, he cut the fences so that you couldn't recontain them. I, I'm glad it turned out that no one got hurt. To have that many animals loose, we were just very lucky that we caught it when we did. You're not ready for something like that. Uh, we had to deal with what we had to do, and that's why I think they've come out with legislation on this kind of uh, practice. It's just, it's not feasible. Uh, safety for the public or for the animals. Immediately following the incident, Ohio ultimately banned the ownership of exotic animals and their transportation across state lines. We don't want to see these animals lose their lives over something like this. They are wild. I mean, the, these animals are not domesticated. They are wild animals. That's what I kept trying to focus on. That's what I did focus on when we did this legislation. They're wild. We knew something needed to be done. Um, the administration knew that something needed to be done, and we had to stand up and, and, and do the right thing for the state of Ohio. And that's what, you know, I had to make that decision also. Challenging as I knew it was going to be, I knew there was going to be a lot of negative feedback from taking on a piece of legislation like this. You know, before I started doing this legislation, I did travel the state of Ohio and going to sanctuaries that, you know, that's the challenging part. There were people that had sanctuaries that were doing it respectfully. You wanted to look at both sides of it, but you also had to take the responsibility to make the right judgment, to set the mind of we weren't going to do this. We weren't going to allow you to have wild animals without certain restrictions that you had to abide by. We had a facility at the Department of Ag that was built out there that took in the people that could not find places for their wild animals. They could take them to the Department of Ag. Um, we stored them there until we could find some place to go. Um, there are good places out there with the facilities that are, are capable of, of handling these animals. And, um, you know, it's some place for these owners can, that can take their animals that they can still have a relationship with. They can still go visit. They can still go feed. I think that was important to a lot of them. You know, it's still there and always will be there, you know, in your mind about it. I'm just so thankful that nobody got hurt, and it's terrible that he had to die. It's a very sad thing. All those animals are buried back there along the, the, the road where they buried them. I mean, they dug a big, put them all in there. You see, they laid them all. See, that was the bad picture on the internet that made people irate because all those animals, when you saw that, that scene, and the, the sheriff was very upset. They don't know who took those pictures, and they put them out. But I mean, that, the, but they had to put them lay them out so they would know they had them all. And the, and the caretaker was the one, like I said, that was counting the heads and telling them, well, yeah, we do have them all or whatever with it. But that made it a terrible scene too, because you see the see all of them lying there, you know, like that. So it wasn't too nice to see. But they're beautiful animals, and you hate to see them get killed. But if you got a choice between the animals and people, you got to save the people, and that's what they did. Mm -hmm.